What's up guys, Trainer Mike here for that Flex Friday workout of the week. I missed you guys, it's been a little while. The holidays got a little crazy, got a little hectic. It's been a couple weeks since we've been in here, but we are back to take you guys through an awesome workout today. We've got light upper body push and of course Q&A. So hopefully you guys have some good questions lined up because I'm gonna need some break in between sets to answer those questions. So hope everybody out there had a great holiday. Happy New Year to everybody as well. Great time of year. Hopefully you guys are setting some goals. I know I've got mine written down and I am ready to roll. It's always an exciting time, very motivating time of the year. So very, very excited about that. And I'm excited to go through this workout. So light upper body push today. Super fun. We're working chest, we're working delts, we're working triceps. And this is an awesome, awesome workout. We're still sticking on that upper body push, upper body pull, lower body routine through the end of January is my plan. I love it, I can't get enough of it. And today is my favorite of the six workouts that we do all week and you're about to see why. So definitely fun stuff coming up. We already got our warm up in, did some PVC pass through, shoulders are feeling good, got a couple warm up sets in. And now I'm gonna get started on some flat dumbbell press. We're gonna go four sets of 10, 100 pounds, and we'll see how that feels. Let's roll. That was lightweight, 2019. Some lightweight. We're gonna have to go up a little bit on that. So 10 reps, good way to start it out. How often should I include a push day during the week? How often should you include a push day? I recommend two times per week. So I recommend working all your body groups two times per week, especially those ones that you want to really grow or see improvements on. One day heavier, one day lighter. Today's our lighter day. Happy New Year's. So lighter days, 10 to 15 reps. Um, on our heavier days, we're going more so like three to eight reps. Uh, what are your goals this year? Goals this year, goal number one, I'd like two magazine covers, two magazine covers this year. Um, and then I also want to get my IFBB Pro card. And then I also want to spend a little more time with the family. Those are the three goals this year, 2019, we're gonna make all of them happen too. Definitely make all of them happen. All right, guys, that was too light. We're gonna go up to 110s for our next set of 10 reps. They, they put them all the way over here though. Half the battle's just getting the weight over there. We're gonna go 110s for 10 reps. Boom! Ah! More noise you make, the more gains you get. Ah. Hope, I hope it doesn't bother the other people in here. All right, here we go. 10 reps. definitely a little heavier you know we're not trying to go to failure on every set but on this first exercise we're definitely wanting to push a little heavier than we do on the rest of the workout What's the best, time of the day to train? best time of the day to train is the time that you feel the best it's different for everybody I know some people that love you know training first thing in the morning some people like training in the evening personally I like to get at least a gallon of water in me and two meals before I train, which puts this noon hour perfect for me, but it's different for everybody. How many days do you train during the week? Um, I usually train six days per week. Okay, Monday through Saturday, take Sunday off. And I do recommend one rest day per week. I think it's important at a minimum. Uh, some people need more. As long as you're eating right, sleeping right, supplementing right, one rest day a week is usually sufficient. Is it too late to start lifting if I'm 54 years young? Is it too late to start lifting if you're 54 years young? You answered your own question 
by the way you asked it. You're 54 years young. It's not too late to start lifting. I'd say absolutely get in there. So many benefits you can see at 54 years old um, from lifting. So get on it and kudos for checking it out and for asking. It's big stuff. Rest between sets, you know, you should aim for about anywhere from 45 seconds to two minutes um, on a workout like this, a little more compound. First exercise, we're resting one to two minutes. And then as we get into the workout a little more isolated, we're gonna rest a little shorter. All right, here we go. Third set, we'll stick with these 110s. They were heavy, but we're gonna take them for another ride. And then on our fourth set, we might go back down to the hundreds. Really trying to focus on keeping my butt on the pad. Uh, but it gets challenging as the weight gets heavier. Here we go, baby. I'm gonna rack these guys up. We're gonna go back down to 100 for our final set. Whew. Definitely takes a little more out of you on the first one. Even though it's a light day, we're still pushing a little heavier on our first exercise. Hit training. training is great. High intensity interval training. Really good for efficient cardio. So if you're looking, for a way to, especially like in the off season, just to keep adding muscle, but keep your heart healthy as well. I like doing hit two to three times per week, 20 minutes a session. How do you track the weight that you use when I work out? It's all up here, baby. I know some people that use like write down on a journal or, you know, might use the body space app. Um, I just have a pretty good recollection of what I've used. I probably should write it down, but I don't. What kinds of exercises work best for getting rid of stubborn fat? What types of exercises work best for getting rid of stubborn fat? The type of exercise where you don't lift your hand up to your mouth quite as much is the best type of exercise. Seriously though, guys, this nutrition, you know that there's really no exercises that are great for stubborn fat. Um, that's nutrition. Exercise for me doesn't change whether I'm trying to build muscle or lose body fat. It all stays the same. I might add in a little extra cardio, but it's nutrition changes that will allow you to lose the body fat. Okay, final set, 10 reps. We're going back down to the hundreds. it is four sets are down we've activated that chest with some heavier exercises now it's time to move on to the supersets this is where it really gets fun guys so we're gonna go incline smith press superset that with an overhead press love this combination so now we're getting into work in the delts but the delts today are not the primary focus as they're a smaller muscle group we're primarily trying to focus on the chest and then the delt, we'll come back and we'll hit with our superset. So we're gonna pull over an incline bench for this guy. And I don't use the Smith machine for a lot of things, but I think the Smith machine serves a great purpose in chest exercises like this one. So we're only going three sets here because, whoop, watch out for the bar. We'll get in the way. Because this is a super set, we're only gonna do three sets here. How often do you train at your sets and reps? How often do I train at my sets and reps? Change, Change my sets and reps, thank you. Um, I do an undulating routine, which means they change 
every day. Um, so you can either do that, where you have like a heavy day and then a light day every week, or you can do it where you do a linear program and you keep your reps and your sets the same and you change every four to six weeks. If you're doing an undulating routine like I'm doing, you don't have to change your sets and your reps for maybe 10 to 12 weeks, which is kind of nice. So 12 reps here, we're gonna pop right up and do an overhead press with weight plates immediately following each set. So we're gonna aim for 12 and then we're gonna aim for 12. Focusing on the upper chest here is the goal. So you want this bar to drop down right below your chin. Right away, pop up 25 pound plates, overhead press standing. Give yourself about a minute break in between sets here. Drinking today, I've got essential amino acids that I'm drinking today. I go with all nine essential amino acids during my training sessions. Uh, latest research is showing a lot of benefit to that, maybe over branch chain amino acids, so amino acids. Ooh. Would I be setting off the lunk alarm if I were in Planet Fitness? I've never stepped foot in a Planet Fitness, so I need you guys' help. Would I set off the lunk alarm at Planet Fitness? Comment below. We'll see what you guys think. Do you have any tips for building bigger shoulders? Tips for building bigger shoulders. I've seen the greatest benefit from really slowing down and using a lighter weight for my shoulder movements. Um, I've found it's a lot of mind-muscle connection when it comes to the delt, and a lot of people make the mistake of going too heavy where they lose that mind-muscle connection. All right, guys, set two. We'll keep our weight the same. We're not trying to go really heavy here. Um, we're trying to get a good rhythm going with this superset. Onto our shoulder press. Ooh. Two, three, four, five, five, eight, nine, ten. Ah. Ah. Ooh. Starts off feeling real light as you get into those reps a little more. Chest is already fatigued. Shoulders are a little fatigued from pressing. Gets real heavy in a hurry. Jeff on Facebook says, loves the podcast, so much stuff. Jeff, thank you for your compliments on the podcast. I appreciate that. I appreciate all you guys that listen to the podcast. Took a couple weeks off for the holidays, but we'll be back on recording this Sunday. Link is in the chat if you guys want to know where to find my podcast. So again, about 60 seconds rest in between these sets. With supersets, you definitely have to make sure that you give yourself enough time to recover so you actually can move some weight. If you go too quickly and you're out of breath, then you're not able to move enough weight, and that's definitely gonna hinder your gains when it comes to maximizing this workout. What's the best split for beginners? Best split for beginners. I actually really like a full body three day per week split for beginners. Um, maybe an upper lower split if you wanna train four days per week. Any advice for a trucker trying to gain muscle with limited space and equipment? 
Ooh, a trucker that wants to gain muscle with limited space and equipment. That's a really good question. You know, there's a lot of body weight stuff you can do if first starting. You know, lunges, body weight squats, push ups, always a good place to start. Um, and then, as you can, you know, you might even move on to using some resistance bands, um, some blood flow restriction training, maybe, so you can take advantage of limited weight, but still see gains from that. All right, guys, final set. Feeling it. We're feeling blood start to flow in, and it feels good. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, 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 eight, nine, ten, eleven, five. Woo! Right away, baby. Let's go. Three. Four, five, eight, nine, ten. Woo! You guys got to check your ego at the door on this workout because you're going to be struggling with some not so significant weight as your workout goes on. But that's good. We always check our ego at the door because we know it's what it takes to get the max gains. So we did a flat heavy press, we moved on, did an incline press, and now it's time to come back and hit a flat press. So I really, really like, it's a variation of a close grip dumbbell press that we're gonna do next, but I'm gonna throw a little tweak in there. It's gonna help you target that inner chest. What are your thoughts on keto and competing? My thoughts on keto and competing. If you can stick to it and you like it, Go for it. Um, I personally don't recommend it. I don't do it, but I know some people that have some great success with it. So if you can do it, go for it. I don't think it's going to be any more beneficial to you than just reducing your calories and still incorporating carbohydrates. All right, three sets of 12 here on this superset. So we're going to do a close grip press. We're going to superset that close grip press with lateral raises, very, very controlled on the laterals. And this close grip press, we're gonna let our air elbows flare at the bottom. And then as we come up, we're gonna push our biceps together. This works really well if you have round dumbbells, not so well if you have the hexagon dumbbells. So check this guy out, 12 reps and 12 reps. You guys are gonna like this. <sighs> So notice how I flare my elbows out at the bottom and then I push my biceps together as I come to the top. almost like a Sven press with dumbbells, I guess is a way I would look at it. Now here, lateral raise, super controlled for 12. There it is. Two meals before training today, which is ideal for me. I find that two is enough. I feel like I have good fuel, but it's not like too much where I feel like I have too much stuff in my stomach and about a gallon of water I like before I train. I'll do seven meals in a day, so still have just five more to go. Yes, the stream has caused you to change your workout. Good, guys. 
Amanda, I'm glad you're gonna give it a try. Let me know how you like it. That's the whole point why we do this, guys. I want you to take these workouts, make the tweaks and adjustments that you need personally, and apply them to your own routine. So my active rest days, I like to incorporate some kind of outdoor activity since uh, most of my training is done in the gym. And I really aim for 10,000 steps in that day. How do I get it? Playing football with the kids, going for a walk, maybe a small hike, something like that. It's a good way to get that in. I try to avoid like machine work, treadmills, things like that. What supplements would you recommend for a beginner starting off the new year? Supplements for a beginner starting off the new year, definitely a whey protein isolate. Um, I'd go with a fish oil as well, 2,000 milligrams a day for a fish oil. And then I would go with either like a branch chain amino acid or an essential amino acid would probably be my top three for you. Okay, set two, 12 reps on our close grip dumbbell press right up to the lateral raises. Right away, much lighter weight than I would normally do on laterals, but important that we're focusing more on form here. Trying to keep our pinkies up. burning guys we got a good pump going on delts chest even coming into the triceps are all starting to feel that blood flow from this workout so for beginners how do you properly use wrist straps a lot of wrist straps have a thumb loop so you want to wrap your thumb around there now wrist strap should always go over the joint the mistake a lot of people make is they wrap too low and it doesn't help with that flexion that comes through that wrist. So you wanna wrap it so that part of it is on the back of the hand and wrap it tight enough to where you're actually getting some support to limit too much flexion there. Good question. Okay guys, third set, 12, red 12 and 12 on the superset. <sighs> chest on fire after doing those now back to our last set of laterals here ah eight nine ten ah ah chest and shoulders very efficient workout too guys we're gonna hit front head lateral head of the delts all areas of the chest and the triceps okay four muscles essentially there all in well under an hour which is super super good women would definitely benefit from this type of workout absolutely um, you know whether your goal is to build muscle lose body fat just overall tone develop this is a great workout for you okay next up we're gonna do dumbbell flies we're gonna superset this one with a uh, front delt raise so now we're moving on to a little more of our isolation movements where we're really trying to target those muscle groups 
specifically through the delts in the chest. We're gonna go high up so we can kind of try and target some of that lower chest that we haven't really had a chance to hit yet. Tips for skinny guys, eat more food, lift heavier weight. In general, that's gonna get the job done. Now for skinny guys, it really takes a lot of consistency. The challenge that a lot of your ectomorphs have is that you might eat enough food, you know, five days a week and then have two days where you forget to prep your food and those two days absolutely kill you. You have to be consistent on eating the amount of calories that you need every single day. So we're gonna use a plate for our front raise. So we'll go 12 on the flies and then we'll go right into a front raise with the plate. So here we go. Kind of a decline fly here. Our 12 right into a front raise. You guys should feel a great pump from this, a lot of blood flow through the chest, through the shoulders, and through the arms, especially as we move on and start hitting triceps a little more. Why are you training chest with shoulders? Why am I training chest with shoulders? It's part of the routine I'm on. It's an upper body push, upper body pull, lower body. So push would be primarily those muscle groups involved with anything pressing. Um, lateral raises could kind of go with either day. I throw them in with my press day because I feel like um, this day is a little less taxing than my pull day. What's your favorite sport to play and watch? Favorite sport to play and watch is soccer. Because I was a soccer player growing up. I played soccer in college. Still play a little bit of indoor soccer now. Big time soccer guy. Not quite as quick as I used to be. A little faster when I was 40 pounds lighter. Uh, what you do to warm up? So to warm up, I did a lot of PVC pass-throughs. So I, I like grabbing a PVC pipe. Most gyms will have one of these laying around. Pass-throughs, just getting the shoulders warmed up back and forth. Even just doing a few sets of 10 on those is a great way to warm up your shoulders. All right, set two on the superset, let's go. Right away into the front raises. Definitely getting a little challenging. Woo! Ah. It's a very good workout. If your cardio is good, if cardio is not good. It can be a little tough to work through these supersets. So it's a good reason to keep some cardio in so you can bash through a workout like this and get the most benefit from it. Any tips for uneven shoulders? Uneven shoulders. You know, a lot of cable work, a lot of dumbbell work can help with some uneven shoulders. Everybody's going to have one side that's maybe a little more developed than the other. Um, for me, it's definitely my right side for everything but my triceps for some reason. So pretty normal, don't get you know too stressed out about it, but uh, try to incorporate plenty of dumbbell and cable work to help make sure that you're working both sides evenly. Any advice for 
advice for somebody coming back to the gym after not working out for a week? Okay, so you're coming back to the gym after not working out for a while. What's my advice? Start slow, you know. Find what you can commit to. You know, don't try and jump back into six days a week. You know, start at three days a week, get consistent on that, slowly jump to four, slowly jump to five, move your weight up slowly. You know, you have to remember that you lose things, um, you know, pretty fast. And it takes a little bit of time to build that back up. Okay, final set, supersets. Flies and front raises, let's go. Here we go, right into the plate raises. Let's make it happen. One, two, three, four, five. There it is, racking it up. We're done with chest, we're done with shoulders. Now all that's left is to hit some triceps. So we're not gonna superset our triceps. Um, we're gonna boot work these just in straight sets and we're really gonna try and focus always on one overhead um, tricep extension and then on one just straight down tricep extension. So we can hit you know medial, lateral, and uh, all the triceps there. So we're gonna start off with a skull crusher over here. We do a little different variation of a skull crusher that I like to do for um, when we're working a little lighter. So we're gonna turn a little differently. We're gonna pronate, supinate, a little more exaggerated than we normally would. The difference between way concentrate and way isolate. Isolate has um, been stripped of almost everything except for the protein. So um, lactose. You have your dairy fat, you have your sugars, pretty much all taken out from its original source. Um, whereas a concentrate, it's been concentrated down, but it's typically gonna be a little higher in fat, a little higher in sugars, and have a little more lactose than a whey isolate would. Both good. You know, whey concentrate's good, a whey isolate's just better. Okay, so we're gonna go 25 pounds. Again, a little lighter. Now pay attention on these guys to how I rotate my arms as I go throughout the movement for these 12 reps. Two, three, little light so we'll go up for our next set but you guys will notice how compared to a normal skull crusher there's a lot more movement in there and it's going to allow us to isolate that tricep a little more and hit it from a little different angle than we would from your traditional skull crusher or tricep extension the mind muscle connection is super important i feel like most people don't pay enough attention to that mind muscle connection but you know especially when working smaller muscle groups triceps, delts, biceps, you know, actually having that contraction in mind with each and every rep is really important. Is it okay to eat oatmeal at night? Is it okay to eat oatmeal at night if you want to? Sure. And if it fits within your daily macro targets, absolutely eat oatmeal at night. It'd be a pretty satiating food that could help prevent, you know, hunger pains at night if you were, you know, in a calorie deficit perhaps. All right, second set, going up to the 30 pounds. Yeah. 
Oh, whew. Still felt a tad bit light. Probably should have started a little higher. I'm gonna go up to 35 pounds for our third set. So my daily nutrition, I do, I do seven meals a day. Um, breakfast, most days, is a 93.7 uh, grass-fed ground beef. Um, do six ounces of that with some veggies, um, low carb on that meal. Pre-workout, usually 160 grams of jasmine rice, chicken, and asparagus. Post-workout, a scoop and a half of uh, whey isolate with glutamine and creatine. Next meal, uh, 160 uh, grams of jasmine rice, five and a half ounces of chicken, veggies. Um, next meal, usually like a chicken salad. Next meal, another shake with peanut butter. And the final meal, I usually do like a cup and a half of egg whites with some almond butter. Yeah, so does gripping the dumbbell handles differently target different areas of the tricep? Absolutely, um, it does. And the way that we rotate the arms will target triceps differently as well. Third set. Definitely should have started with that weight as that one felt the best of the movement so far. Let's take a little break and we'll do one more set of those before moving on to our final tricep movement. We'll do a little cardio after this today. It's a good day to do some cardio. We've got the time for it. I always say this guys, bulking, cutting, doesn't matter. If you guys have time to do some cardio, um, throw some in, you know. My preferred method of cardio, I really like the stair climber. Um, works out really good to Instagram while I'm doing my cardio. So it's nice if you gotta post that Flex Friday picture after, whereas opposed to maybe being on the treadmill where I feel like I might fall off if I'm you know, paying too much attention to my phone. I don't stretch after training, I probably should, but I do my stretching like in the evening. Um, I like to do my foam rolling and my stretching, maybe while watching a little Netflix or something. Okay, final set. Skull crushers, let's go. Okay guys, one more tricep movement. Like I said, I always like to incorporate one type of overhead tricep movement, which we just did there, and then one press down movement, which we'll do next. So we can make sure that we target all areas of the tricep. Developing a muscle fully is important and paying attention to how you structure your exercises can definitely play a role in that. So we'll come right over here for some tricep extensions. We're gonna go reverse grip on here. So a flat bar or an easy bar works. We'll use this flat bar that's over here. We've got four sets of 12 on a reverse grip, triceps extension. Do you really need one gram of protein per pound of body weight? Depends on what your goals are, okay? Um, that's definitely on the higher end of what you need, but there's no downside to it. Protein is a great food. It is very difficult to be converted into fat. Um, it's very satiating, doesn't impact blood sugar like carbohydrates do, and it's very thermogenic, meaning it takes a lot of calories to digest and work through protein. So I recommend for those reasons, a gram of protein per pound of lean body mass at a minimum up to a pound per body mass. Okay, here we go. <sighs>
Ah. 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 Eh. Nein. Ah. 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 Here we go. 12 controlled reps. Especially when we're isolating a smaller muscle group like triceps. Don't get caught up in the weight, guys. Just pick a weight that you can control and that you're going to feel a really good contraction with each and every rep. Five by five program for muscle growth. Really good for like beginners to intermediate. Um, you know, eventually you're going to want to incorporate some higher reps for muscle growth. Works really well for your compound movements, you know, squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press, pull ups. Um, not so well when it comes to like shoulder laterals or bicep curls or anything like that. But you can pretty much include that all the time for your main compound movements. Um, really gives you a good amount of volume. Okay, second set. Two sets down, two to go, and then we gear up for that Flex Friday picture of the day. How do you know how much weight you should be using? It's a good question. You should ask yourself, are you able to control the weight or is the weight controlling you? You should always be able to get at least that two second negative on the way down, one, 1,000, two, 1,000. Um, so if you can't do that, you probably need to lighten up the weight. And then two, are you able to hit close to failure with your prescribed number of repetitions? All right, guys, third set. Not as much rest needed for a movement like this. We're going to be done with this workout in 45 minutes, which is really good, really efficient. 20 minutes of cardio. We're in and out of here in just over an hour with cardio. That's an efficient workout. If you guys can use these supersets properly, it's a really good way to get a workout in. Should you take creatine before or after your workout? It does not matter, okay? Timing of creatine doesn't really play that big of an impact in how well it's utilized. It's one of those things that's an investment over time, it builds up in your bloodstream, your levels of creatine go up and you see the benefits of it after time. I like doing mine post-workout, seems to absorb a little better with some carbohydrates, um, but it, you're really splitting hairs at that point in time. Okay, final set, here we go. Two, three, four. There it is, guys. Out. We did light upper body push. Go ahead and give this workout a try. We've got it all listed for you there. You guys can go back and watch this again and again if you want and see how to do the exercise as well. So make sure you guys check out my Instagram. That handle is at TrainerMike1. Facebook page, athlete page at Trainer Mike Physique, body space at Mr. Symmetry. Appreciate you guys tuning in and checking this one out for now. We're gonna hit you with one of these side chests for that Flex Friday. Boom!